Welcome back to Outdoor Chef Life. I'm Taku. Today we're going to check out the Northern California coast tide pools. See if we can catch a fish on a poke pole. Look at this low tide area. Perfect. It is peak low tide at the moment. So we've got to get down there before the tide starts coming in. First thing I noticed when I walked up here, I don't think you can see that on the GoPro, but we'll go down there. This whole area right here, just right in front of us, is covered in sea urchin. And over here as well, down over here, just, just right there is insane amount of sea urchin. Just shoulder to shoulder, they're crowded. So let's go check them out. Careful. You want me to go first? Here, here, let me take the camera. Okay guys, let's go check this out. I didn't bring any bait with me, so I'm gonna need to find some. Most likely mussels or limpets. Let's just go check out that area where we're just infested with sea urchin. Oh, there's a ton right here already. This is what I'm talking about. Oh my gosh. Shoulder to shoulder. <laughs> Not really a good thing either. Man. It would be a good thing if the uni was full. But I don't think it will be. One, because of the season. Um, I think they recently spawned in the winter time. So they would have released all of the uni. And two, just because they're just so many next to each other they're competing for food so nobody really has food so I grab one of the bigger ones here as you can see not much in there there's like a tiny sliver there you go that tiny bit tastes pretty good though tastes pretty good it's insane how many there are though absolutely insane I wonder if I could use a piece of uni as bait. That might be good. Let me find one of the bigger ones in here. Look at that. That's a good size. Most likely the same story with this one. Oh, actually there's a little bit more in here. There you go. A little bit more in this one. Oh yeah, I forgot. I said I was going to use them for bait. Nearly ate it all. See if it stays on the hook at all. That would be a challenge. There you go, that might work. That might work. I'm going to take this in my bucket that I have on me. And let's go see if we can find an eel. Jocelyn is over there. We'll go towards her. Look, more sea urchin all over the place. It's not good. Yeah, all this sea urchin is not a good thing. So, purple urchin in California, they're not an invasive species. A lot of people refer to them as being invasive, but that would mean that they're not, they would be non native. But they are. Purple urchins are native to the region, so they're not considered invasive okay but um, just because of the imbalance in the ecosystem uh, I believe it was with the sea stars dying off uh, and for mysterious reasons the sea urchin boomed in population now they're taking over the coastline and they're competing with things like native abalone because they all compete for the same food source there's one abalone right there where is it under the rock this rock? Yeah. Oh, I think that's... Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's an abalone in there. It's a little dark. I don't know if you can see it, but... Small one. And it doesn't really look to be... Doesn't really look that happy. Tucked in there. I'm gonna walk out a little bit further out. 
I don't really see very many holes. All these rocks kind of don't have any ledges under them. It's all just one piece of rock. I want to get under a nice, uh, nice big rock, just a nice boulder to get under. Maybe that boulder there. It's a pretty uh, big boulder here. Let's see. Let's just poke under this rock. Just see if anybody's home under there. I'm just putting it right at the entrance, not even inside of it, just to see if anything will come out. This would be more of a, a rockfish or a cabazon hole right here. Nothing in there. Let's try this side. Maybe they just don't like uni, or maybe there's nothing under there. The tide is rushing back in. Oh, the waves are huge. There we go. Here's some mussels. I think for bait, for um, in the tide pools like this, number one would be squid. But if you didn't bring any squid, I think number two would be mussels. And then number three would be limpids. And if you can't find limpids, then go home. <laughs> because the tide's probably not low enough. Okay, we'll just take a few of these mussels. Half for bait. There you go. That's a nice meaty part of the muscle. Hmm. Where should I poke? Just trying out this deep ledge. Hey. Gotta keep your head on a swivel here. Make sure no tsunamis come and take us out. Looks like a bigger one coming. Oh shoot, look at that bit. Look at that wave. Gotta watch this one. Oh no. Luckily this rock kind of breaks them apart by the time it gets here. That's a good hole, I think. Yeah, that, that's really nice right there. Perfect size opening and it's just dark. Dark under that rock. If there's no fish or eel under here, I just don't think there's any around here. <laughs> and I'm wondering if the, uh, the amount of sea urchin there are here has to do with the lack of fish. Sea urchin eating up a bunch of seaweed. Doesn't really leave much shelter for the fish. No bites under there. Is anybody home? Take a look at that. You see that sea urchin that's significantly bigger than the rest? That one there. That is a red urchin. Honestly, quite purpley too, but that is a red urchin. Almost looks like a hybrid, to be honest, because <laughs> it's very purple with the short spines. The shorter spines are very purpley, but red urchin can be get, can vary in color from like light pinkish to red to even black. They're just a bigger variety that we have in California, but not doing as much damage as the purple urchins or it's not doing any damage at all. Cause look, you, look how many they are opposed to the purples, you know, just here and there. If there is nothing under this rock, I would be surprised. Oh, what is it? Hmm, felt a little something. Maybe it just got caught. Let's put it in a little deeper. I like to push it in basically as much as it goes and then pull it back a little bit and just hold it there if nothing hits in 30 seconds it's not gonna hit there's nothing down there or they just don't want to eat that's weird there's nothing down here I would expect a fish or a eel to be under here at all times nothing maybe I'll switch my bait instead of mussels maybe we'll try limpids okay I got a limpid here Let's try the same rock, just to see, just to see if it was the bait. Nothing. So these monkey face prickleback, that's what I'm going for right now. Their main food source is seaweed. And so is the diet for the sea urchin. They all eat seaweed as well. So like I was saying earlier, I wonder if all the sea urchin being here has to do something with you know, no monkey face prickleback, those other fish being here. 
Could be. Could be related. Or I could just be rusty too. <laughs> yeah, they literally have no food. They're not even eating anything. It's all rock. They're eating rocks. All right, guys, I gave up on the poke pole. Let's take some uni. We'll turn this into a uni video since there's so many of them. Let's try to get the bigger ones just so we get a better yield, hopefully. These are pretty good size. And I'm using an old abalone shell just to pry them off. All right guys, we're gonna walk back to camp now. Check this out. We're just walking back and on the trail, all this right here, you guys know what this is. Wild onion, also known as three corner leek. And this is delicious stuff. I'm gonna harvest some of it. Oh um, man, use it for a dish later. So you can take these all the way down from the root. And look at that. Looks like a beautiful onion, huh? Green onion. And then it's all edible too. You can even take the bulb as well. It broke off there, but it's all edible. This was, uh, we saw this in our episode of Deliciously Invasive with Dr. Kevin. This was a, an invasive species that we have in California. Three corner leek, if you take a look at them. Yeah, three corners. Pretty straightforward. Smells so good, it just smells exactly like onion. There we go, this one came out with the bulb. I could probably keep this alive for a while. Delicious invasive species. Hey guys, well, we're back at our campsite. Check it out. Got the uh, van right there and then we got our fireplace going. And I'm starting to prep the uh, sea urchin here. Grab one of the abalone shells out there. I'm just smashing them. <laughs> there you go. Once I smash it, I'll clean them out. Right now isn't the best time of year uh, for the yield on these uh, on the uni. It's just uh, usually the fall time is the best. Fall or like early uh, winter. And then throughout winter, they'll be spawning usually. But yeah, this, this is a tiny, tiny yield. They're pretty much all about the same size. I'm hoping that later in the year, we'll come back here and hopefully the yield is much better. Then we can harvest a bunch of them and actually have a, a good yield. Because even, these are good size sea urchin, but... It's just so small. This is like like their belly sack, I guess. And I was kind of like looking in there. And I noticed, oh, this one has some seaweed in it. But uh, a lot of them just had rocks. They're eating rocks because they don't have anything else to eat. As you saw, there's thousands of them. They're pretty firm at the moment. Not milky at all. So it would have been milky probably... Uh, in the winter when they were spawning and I'm just dropping them in to my little bowl of water here and I have a bowl of salt water too salt water I brought back from the tide pool we'll wash it off in there at the end and uh, that'll be the best way to prepare them if you want to keep them for um, 
for longer than a, a day or so um, you should process all of them take take all the meat out all the uni out and leave them in the salt water uh, that you get from the tide pool that's gonna keep it nice and fresh for uh, the longest and no it's not gonna make it salty they live already in the salt water small but still tastes good I also have a feeling that we're beyond the point seasons make a difference in the yield because they're com not only competing with the abalone for food they're competing with each other so nobody has anything to eat and the sea urchins themselves don't have enough energy to produce the delicious uni worst case scenario so these are so nice and like really brightly colored so I think there's hope I think we'll come back later in the year at the spot and and see what it looks like I think it should be a little bit better than this okay guys we're just gonna do a simple dinner for tonight uh, we're gonna do a carbonara spaghetti with topped with uni and we'll use some of those uh, wild onions too, just on, to the garnish. Easy, easy. And uh, yeah, we'll get right to it. Got some pancetta right there. Uh, just got some nice sourdough bread. Got a couple eggs. Got my water boiling there. And got a cast iron over there. Just gonna throw it on those uh, hot coals. This is all they had at the store. Pre-grated Parmesan cheese. We'll work with it. Natto pasta. That sounds delicious. Couple eggs. I'll just whisk it up with this. black pepper Let's see pan hot now not quite got my wild onion just cut the end off and uh, we'll just slice off this uh, uh, white part okay right up right up to there It's already boiling, so it should be real quick. Boiling. Okay, we gotta do the sea urchin that we cleaned out. Let's see, we gotta just drain it, drain the salt water. You just put it on a piece of paper towel there. Not much, but it was like from 20 sea urchin. Make sure that doesn't fly away. How's my pasta? Put a little pasta water in here with the eggs. Oh, that's, that's a little too much. Pasta should be ready in about a minute. Yep. 
about ready. Spaghetti going into the pan. And a little bit of pasta water. Finish cooking in there. We've got a little, little bit of salt and pepper in here too. Got my sauce. Just gonna do a double boiler. We're going straight into the sauce. That'll kind of cook the eggs and make it nice and creamy. There you go, look at that. That's done. Put a little bit more of this wild onion on here. Mix that in. And to forget about our uni. All right, guys, here it is. Carbonara with fresh uni and wild onion. There we go. Mmm, yum, yum. That's really nice. Looks tasty. Cheers. Yeah. You got just tea. Yeah, since I had my Moscow meal since yesterday. Since you're pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just don't want to drink every day. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm, mm. happy, happy hops IPA from Russian River. Never had this one, I've only had their Pliny. Are you happy to have strong IPAs again? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the IPAs are so good, so much better. Okay, here we go. Mmm. The spaghetti tastes like wheat spaghetti. It does. I think we got healthy spaghetti. Mm. Yeah, it's uni. It's good, but it's so small. So small that it's not really, really creamy or, you know, it's just the season. It's very pretty. Mm -hmm. mm. I hate when you order carbonara at a restaurant and it's like a really heavy sauce. Mm -hmm. It's just like a ton of, um, Cream. Mm -hmm. They just use heavy cream most places. Real carbonara. It's no cream. Hey, there it is. There's the bite. The little bread, spaghetti, and the uni. Mm. Yum. Well, since we have uh, the wild onion left, tomorrow morning we're going to make some kimchi pancakes. Uh, stay tuned for that. Okay, guys. Well, it's the next day, and I want to make some th invasive three-cornered leek kimchi pancakes. I think that sounds delicious. I, I was just thinking of a way to utilize the three-cornered leeks. Uh, and I figured I have all the ingredients to make the, the uh, kimchi pancakes, so I'll go with that. I uh, just got the fire going, so that, that'll take a few minutes to get nice and hot. Uh, in the meantime, let's prep our ingredients. Okay, first ingredient, obviously we have our invasive three-corner leek. Start with that. I went to pick some again, uh, just because we didn't have enough from last night. And there's plenty over there, so might as well utilize them. Cut the ends off, chuck them in the fire, and I'm gonna cut them into about two inch slices here. The whole entire plant is edible, the, even the flowers. I think we'll save this for garnish. I'm just gonna measure this out. I just gotta get in the habit of measuring stuff because I'm writing that cookbook. So. 
I'm gonna call that half one. I'll call that three cups. It's hard to measure something like that. Measuring stuff is so tedious. Take some kimchi and do about a half cup of kimchi. I will do one cup of kimchi then. Almost one cup. Korean chili flakes. A little bit of that. Sesame oil. I'm going to put a half a tablespoon. That's probably half a tablespoon. <laughs> Still being rough with the measurements. Sesame seeds. Teaspoon. Flour. And I've also got a little cornstarch in there. Should be, I wrote, I think, one tablespoon cornstarch. Okay, and a little salt. Oh, and I said one cup water, I believe. This is a half cup measurement. You might need more flour. Yeah, I could do a little more flour. So we'll go with the full, full cup. Yeah, well that, that'll thicken it up quite a bit, and I think that should be about the right consistency. Yeah, that looks good. So, one to one on the water to flour ratio. That looks good. A fan is nice to have when you want to control the fire, when you want to control the uh, intensity. There we go. A little bit of oil. It's nice and hot. Heats a little too high if we go direct. It heats a little too low if we go on the grate. Here. Okay, Jocelyn's gonna try it. Yeah. Mm. Mm. It's um chewy. The pancake part. Mm hmm It's nice. I like one pancake. Kimchi pancakes have a little chewiness, you know, like mm, mochi yeah. kind of chewy. Yeah. And how's the three corner leek? It's good. Nice and crunchy. Tastes like green onion, basically. Yeah. Mm, I love kimchi. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right. Mine is done now. Ooh, looks delicious. Nice and like a uh, kind of gooey. Oh, fully cooked. Mmm. Mmm. The kimchi flavor comes through. It's a little spicy. And the three corner leek. It is nice and crunchy. Kind of has, yeah, has a really good texture to it. Mm. Once the three corner leek is cooked, it's nice and it's kind of sweet as well. Like, just like an onion. All right. Well, delicious. I think that's going to be it for this one. We'll cut it off here. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, make sure to hit that thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.